Thank you, Lauren. Lauren. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Everyone taking your lunch? Anyone sleeping? Wake up. <laughs> I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes with you sharing about how we got involved in the space. Um, if you're playing with your phone, you don't want to play, you can take as many photos as you like because um, we got invited. Uh, thank God for it. We got invited to a lot of different countries, New York, Los Angeles, Hollywood, um, Thailand, uh, in China, Australia, a lot of places, Japan, Indonesia, and also different parts of the world, University of California Irvine to share on the eSports initiative. You can add me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or even on Twitter. Okay, everyone take out your phone if you... Oops, is it working? Hang on, guys. Okay. Take out your phone, you can scan my barcode, I can share with, share with you the presentation later because the organizers won't be sharing it, so you can add me on WeChat right now. So a bit of background about myself, I'm a college dropout. I was doing paintball, you know, the shooting game. I was doing it for 10 years before joining Air Asia. And one day, Tony came to my office and like, hey, Tony Fernandez, he's wearing shorts, no bodyguard. I'm like, oh, so cool. He came with the sun, bought some paintball stuff. That was on the seventh year of my paintball business. And on the 10th year, I left the business because the Malaysia government is very strict, and I joined Air Asia. So I'm now on my seventh year with Air Asia, on my seventh portfolio, eSports. I've been doing stuff like business development, regional marketing, back-end systems for the past six years. And uh, both Tony and Dato Kamarudin are very supportive of our eSports initiative. Okay, um, who knows about eSports? Hands up. Okay, quite, quite a few, about 50%. Um, those who actually know a lot, please bear with me. You might be more expert than me, who knows? And um, both uh, Tony and Dato Din, they also share on their social media about eSports. Tony likes to play FIFA. Recently, he even played in a FIFA competition with all the CEOs about a week ago. Dato Kamarudin knows about Dota as well. A bit about Asia, we started with 200 all-stars of employees, two aircraft and 40 million ringgit debt. Who starts a business with 40 million negative, right? Now we have 20 over 1,000 all-stars and 200 aircraft across the group. For those who don't know about Air Asia, and also we fly to all over Southeast Asia, including to Hawaii, Honolulu in US. Flew over 500 million passengers to date. And some of the other non esports stuff we do, like Taylor Swift livery. NFL at one time. Manchester United, any MU fans here? Oh, okay, a few. Liverpool? <laughs> okay, got over there. Uh, QPR, Manny Pacquiao, the boxer, Kabali in India, UFC, I'm sure some of you are familiar with, even K drama. Okay, esports, right? In a, even in Netflix, in a letter to shareholders, last year, end of the year, they said that, okay, guys, our competitor is no longer HBO, it's esports, Fortnite, right? Because everyone has 24 hours in a day, and what is everyone doing with their 24 hours, the Gen Zs and the Millennials? Even Liverpool CEO, ah, Liverpool over there. So even the CEO said that, okay, guys, we've got a problem. The next generation of fans are not coming to our stadium anymore. What are they doing? They're like playing Fortnite and uh, other eSport titles, right? Gaming. Even, do you know that in SEA Games this year, in Manila, Philippines, in December, there's going to be eSports, there's going to be six titles. It means you get medal for your country and get points for your country, you know? A lot of millennials and Gen Z is going to be watching it. It's going to be really big. There's going to be a big wave after this SEA Games, end of the year. Last year, in Asian Games, in uh, Jakarta, Palembang, it was an exhibition spot whereby teams get medals, but you don't get points for your country. But there's a big wave also within all the governments. Even uh, there was a 10 million ringgit youth allocation, uh, allocation for esports. And okay, any brand or company that's not involved in esports as part of their marketing initiative is already behind the curve. Even a lot of agencies in Malaysia are kind of behind, but they're trying to get access to it right now. There's uh, streamers earning a lot of money. Even in Malaysia, there are streamers earning 10,000 ringgit up to 50,000 ringgit a month playing games. No kidding. So uh, if you ever stop your kid from playing games, um, try not to. Lah. They might be earning more than you. <laughs> uh, even some other big corporate giants like PSG try to penetrate the space via esports like PSG. And also like games like Apex Legends, they were doing well at the start. Even President Jokowi 
did his sports tournament, President's Cup in Indonesia in uh, April of this year, before the elections. Even the French government is involved in it, right? They want to connect to youth on a platform called Twitch. Anybody know what's Twitch? Okay, good. Most of you don't know. I'll share more later. So why is Asian to eSports? First one is employee engagement. You know, nowadays companies, right? You got futsal club, badminton club, you have bowling club, go for outings. But hey, guess what? Why don't you create an eSports club for your employees? It's, you know, uh, if you do a chess club, a bit boring, right? Chess club, huh? No offense, huh? More senior people here. <laughs> but you do an eSports club, Mobile Legends, 5 on 5 example, or PUBG Mobile. You can do a team already, you can play against other companies, right? So we did that. Second is employer branding. Your next generation of your employees, they're going to be into this gaming uh, culture, right? And you want to embrace it, you know? In Malaysia or even Asia, some pantang, right? Hey, no need to work, uh, play games. Uh. The kind of mentality, the bosses, right? So you need to remove that away. Then people are like, oh, wow, hey, just support esports. Okay, I want to join that company. It's part of your HR endgame. We share some screenshots later of some uh, organic uh, postings made by the people. Third, esports tourism. We believe the next generation will be flying around for esports events, just like your BTS, your Blackpink, and all that happening right now. Fourth is also supporting the ecosystem because esports is not just about the gamers, there's a whole ecosystem to it, which I'll share in a bit. Even in Tony's book, he mentioned about esports. Uh, his son was the one who told him about it. But guess what? In Asia, our core business is flying people from point A to point B. So, uh, what is esports got to do with Asia directly, right? What happened was, this is a story. In June 2017, a pilot came up to me. Hey, Alan, uh, Tony know about esports. I'm like, huh? Apa tu? I don't know. Even though I used to play games lah, um, back then, 20 years ago, in the cyber cafe, uh, CS 1.6, Counter-Strike, or Ray Alert, StarCraft 1, or StarCraft 2, but I didn't know it's esports, you know. And then after that, he said, hey, so I like, ah, don't care, not my KPI, right? And the second thing is like, hey, Tony know about Twitch. I'm like, what on earth is Twitch? Ah? Like, y'all, ah. I thought Twitch is like The Rock, you know, WWE, move his eye, Twitch, his eyebrow. So I'm like, how come my boss knows so much? Ah? Go Google. Wow, esports, Twitch, the millennials, the Gen Z, the eyeballs, the projections. The, you know, it's a lot of hype as well, but the good thing is it's a spectator sport. That caught my attention, the keyword there, the trigger point. Because when I was in paintball last time, approaching brands, you know, then they asked me, Alan, what's your ROI? What is the footfall traffic? How many people watching this? And back then, paintball is not a spectator sport because the ball is going so fast, you cannot see. Shoot 3, 000, uh, 300 feet per second. In eSports, it's a spectator sport, but I still don't understand why people watching games are. So we did a feedback survey on our Azure workplace by Facebook. We asked around, hey guys, you play any games? Like, wow, a lot of uh, positive feedback. About 200 over responses. Not bad. Which games they play? Um, you can, I can share this with you later. You can download my link in. It's over there. A lot of positive responses. So, but people still don't understand. When I go to decision makers, they're like, hey guys, I think Azure should get involved in eSport. Then they're like, eh, eSport, what's that? Gaming. What's gaming? Uh, they thought gaming go Genting Highland Judy, you know. <laughs> okay. Houston, we have a problem. So like, how to convince senior management about eSports? This is 2017, two years ago, right? So we created this jersey. I spent my own money at first, about 4,000 ringgit. Cannot claim, huh? Who spends 4,000 ringgit in a company that you cannot claim, right? Because there's no budget for eSports. But I wanted the management to know. So I did it and put names there behind so that people don't treat it like a rag after they get it, free, free freebies, right? Gave one to Tony, it went viral internally at first, and then the next day, Dato Din's uh, PA messaged me, hey, Alan, Dato Din wanna talk to you. I'm like, oh, what did I do wrong? Because Dato Din doesn't know me, you know? I'm like, hello, Dato Din? Alan, where's my jersey? I'm like, what jersey? Yesterday, give Tony. Oh, you give one boss, but I have to give the other boss, right? Because he thought it's under company budget. I'm like, oh, Dato Din, uh, yeah, I got your jersey ready. Um, then he's like, are you free tonight? Yeah. So I went over to his house, was there from like 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, we, during the breaks, he's like talking to his son about other businesses, and then uh, I did a five-minute elevator pitch, and like, hey, Datuni, can I show you about esports? Da, da, da. I shared with him, gave him videos, and then after that, he found out it's my own money. He reimbursed me. I'm like, ah, okay, I don't have to eat cup noodles for one month. Four thousand ringgit, you know, I cannot claim. Cause he said, ah, your own money, crazy, yeah. Now I claim under executive chairman budget, so I'm like very thankful for that. Who you can claim? 
so these are our C-suite executives, branding, marketing, CEO, CFO, CMOs, all the O's. Yeah, give it to them so they understand. So I told them, okay, guys, I give you free. Yeah? Every Thursday in the office of 2000 inside RayQ, uh, please help to wear it. So inside the meeting, you got like, hey, Summer, how come you got this jersey? Very nice, huh? Well, what's that? Esports, what is esports? Then you got the internal awareness going on, right? So we did a pilot project, because esports is about doing a lot of research and going on ground, talking to community. We spent a lot of time, a lot of after 6 p.m., going Yamcha, Mamak, Te Tari session, asking them, and they gave us feedback, why don't you start internally? So we created a group. We are probably the first esports team, la. got S us next to us, man. Yeah, so it's like, so these are all different walks of life. Yeah? You've got IT people, you've got engineers, cabin crew, pilots, who are gamers, right? So we did hijack marketing, guerrilla marketing. We went to a local event organized by Slango State Government. And uh, we took part in Dota, it's a type of game, as well as uh, FIFA. Our students were there as well. There's also cosplayers, we took photos with them. And uh, yeah, even Razer. Uh, Fairy Frills company, they shared on their Facebook page. And then it went viral. Boom! Azure involved in esports. It's all organic. Uh, it got picked up by media. It's like free PR for us. So, the important thing about esports is it needs to be authentic. In America, they call it the A word authentic. You cannot like fake it. You cannot like do one time, then get out. Then the the community will call you out, they post on Reddit, you go viral for the wrong reason. So you need to be in there through thick and thin. So you need to make sure you know how you do your esports strategy. So even Tony met up with Razor, boss, Min Liang. This guy there on the left, his net worth is like 1.4 billion US by Forbes and uh, backed by Lee Kashing for Razor. So met up with him as well. There's even a smartphone for gaming right now called Razor 2. So we also organize internal tournaments to embrace the community right, internally. So we do like FIFA events, Dota events. We hijack over, over another conference, press conference after it, and played FIFA on the big screen. Tutorials during lunchtime as well. And uh, we also organize our own internal tournament for Dota. About 40 of us came together. Also one-on-one -on -one in the office after 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone's happy, so on a, wow, yeah. We also Mobile Legends, we went to Pantheon, it's an esports arena in one city. 40 of us came together and played. Also, we are scaling up across the region where we got market presence. So in Thailand, uh, the community came together, our all-stars, 50 of them played another game, ROV. We also did uh, a lot of integration with the esports community. So even two years ago and last year, and most likely this year also, there's a big event called The International. Anyone heard before The International? Okay, you all don't know, good. So long story short, in 2011, this, Dota, this game called Dota, the prize money was 1.6 million US dollars, contributed by the, the owner of the game called Val from US, right? After that, guess what? From 2011 to now, this year, they still contribute 1.6, right? But like back then, in 2017, the community crowdfunded itself and com contributed the balance, right? And this year, last year was 24. Uh, sorry, on 2017 is 24, 2018 is 25. Year on year is growing up. The prize money, yeah? No sponsors. And this year is over, I think over 31 million, if not mistaken, hit 32 million US dollars already. Usually the finals is in US or Canada. But this year, right, on August 25th, it's going to be held in Shanghai, China, for the first time ever, outside of the US. So uh, I brought some friends, la, about 40 years old and above, to one of these uh, viewing party events. Just like, you know, World Cup, you can't go there, right? But then you can watch from your own country. So TGV Cinema was booked up, about 10 halls, uh, Sabah, Sarawak, even in uh, Johor, Ipoh, your Wanutama, as well as Penang, and a crowd like you guys, right? But the younger demographics, probably you want to target them, they're all there, you know, like from 12 a.m. midnight until 9 a.m. the next morning. So my friend there, 40 years old, like, wow, they bring their own pajamas, bring their own jacket, bring their own pillow, crazy. It's a culture, right, by itself, and they stay there and watch their favorite teams playing. So we integrate with the community and join them and embrace the culture as well. Sorry, U-Mobile, they did an eSports event back then, in 2017, Dota event. So we also sent our own employees over there, our all-stars. 
corporate versus uni. The big four, Ernst & Young, Pricewaterhouse, KPMG, Deloitte, they have their own esports club, right? And uh, they have their own Dota tournament every year as well. Petronas has about 12 Dota teams. And every, almost every college right now in Malaysia, public and private, university, they have their own esports club with a structure. You've got president, you've got secretary, etc. So we took part in a college versus corporate event. We kind of trash her, right? Because they got more time, right? But it's okay. EGG Network under Astro, they have a 24 by 7 esports channel on 808. So um, they, they came to our place. We had a lot of fun. Office war, they call it. Yeah, they did production. Another event in, in uh, PWTC, we were over there, we sent our employees. So in the esports world, there's three types, yeah? There's console, which is your PS4, uh, Xbox, there's your PC, or your laptop, and there's your mobile, right? So we, we split it up across the group. Okay, guys, who want to take care of which division? This is inside internally, and we're going to scale across where we got market presence in. These are our own employees. So this is the end game for HR. See, wow, I want to join Asia after I complete my degree in data science, right? And this is all organic. We didn't pay any of them to uh, make those comments. So we also have a gaming room. We don't call it gaming room because gaming like gambling, right? So we call it eSports Zone inside our office. So I really found our colleagues is uh, helped to set it up. We got sponsorship from Dell, Alienware, Razer, and Secret Lab. The whole value is about 200,000 ringgit. So right now, it's quite cramped up, but it's going to look 10 times better um, in a two weeks' time. It looked really chunky, so happy to share the slides on LinkedIn later, the photos. So back then, right, in 2017, huh, when I searched online, right, in Google News about eSports, hardly any news about Malaysia or even Southeast Asia. Um, there's always a lot of stuff about US and Europe. So like, how do I get this information? So we decided to fly Asia, like take mini bus, right? So I fly, fly, fly everywhere, try to understand, talk to developers, publishers. What is eSports? Uh? See, like no one's watching their mobile phone, you know? Everyone's like watching the screen. This is in Tropicana City Mall, Mobile Legends event, Paradigm Mall. This is in Thailand. So I was in Bangkok for eSports event. Anyone here has been to an eSports event? Hands up. Oh, nobody. I want to feel that, right? Okay, guess what? If you haven't been, I've been and happy to show you how is it like, right? Think of like your Manchester and Liverpool in the stadium. This is their version. This is the future, guys. You got the sound, guys? It's in Thai, la, huh? somebody car, so. So you got team on the left and right, you got the supporters. Then you got the cosplayers as well. Get the score a point. So this is in another one in China, League of Legends, the China Finals. So the first day I came up from my taxi, right? People offering me tickets, sir, do you want to buy it? I'm like, wow, so high level, selling tickets. On the third day I came up from my taxi, people offering me cash. Sir, can I buy your ticket? I'm like, huh, you want to buy my ticket? They're going to resell it for 10 times the amount. Wow, the ticket scalpers there, really high level, right? It's like your World Cup or English Premier League. And uh, Jay Chow was one of the artists over there. He supports esports as well. This photo, Bird's Nest Stadium, 2017. Big wave happening. I'm like, wow. I show this to Dato Kamaruddin, right? He's like, hey, Ellen, this one fake news. Ah. You Photoshop? Ah. I'm like, no, I'm there. Really? Ah. Then I showed the video, right? Um, so, guys, this is not Olympics. This is not traditional sports. It's esports. And uh, even the Olympic committee is like getting nervous because uh, their age demographics is average 55 years old watching Olympic. Wow, so old already. Uh. How to get sponsored next time, lah, right? So they need to target the next generation. So Olympic IOC is also trying to understand esports because if not, you miss the boat, you miss your next generation of your consumers. So I was there and I took this photo. Sorry, it's a bit uh, shaky. <laughs> So they're looking at a big giant screen, right? And uh, if you've never been to an eSport event, you might not understand what's happening. But they understand, yeah? 
They exactly understand what's going on. So of course, different country, localization, different language, different casting. So no one's looking at their handphone, everyone's like looking at the screen, right? So this is League of Legends by Riot Games and Tencent. So uh, after the game, right, it is a team called SKT, sponsored by SK Telecom. It's like your Maxis lah, and in, in South Korea. So there's a guy called Faker on the team. Faker is like a David Beckham lah for League of Legends. And we accidentally passed by the hotel, you know. So I'm like, why you got one crowd there? Got accident or what? And like, everyone's like, eh, shouting, screaming, like, they're like shouting, Faker, Faker, SKT. I'm like, what is going on here? Oh my goodness. You know, I've never seen it before. I've never experienced it. Because sometimes you see on YouTube, I see different, it's a bit different on ground. So they're all shouting, screaming, some crying also. <laughs> uh, I saw like blur already. These guys need bodyguards, okay? No bodyguard, gone. Yeah, so that's in uh, League of Legends event in China. So of course, like Tencent spent a lot of money on advertising and promotion. They're already spending money, guys. So why not latch on these uh, games, right? That's the Great Wall of China in uh, eSports colors. These are the landmarks in China. This is another event in KL, in Singapore, in Genting Highlands. So 6,000 people, if you don't know, they went to Genting Highlands uh, 2017 and 2018 for ESL1 Genting. It's a Dota event. And uh, wow, Genting is happy, right? All F&B outlets, people buying food, drinks, and uh, people spend a lot of money yeah, for the room nights and stuff like that. One ticket is about average 200 ringgit to up to 800 ringgit VIP pass. You get a fan experience, VIP experience, meet your players, meet your superstar. And this Mobile Legends in uh, Indonesia, the floor is like packed, three, four layers per floor. And my friend was there, right? He's stuck in the lift, cause nowhere else to see, right? So he just go up and down. So the guy all chasing them out, 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 out. Yeah, it's crazy. Even in Malaysia also got. We shall share in a bit. So this is in US. I was over there for a CS:GO event. It's like US versus Europe, Mouse Esports versus uh, Team Liquid. So this is a meet and greet session. This is how it looks like. See the fans, all oh, the mouth open. Tenganga, right? Yeah, so this uh, CSGO is a FPS game, a first, person sh first person shooter. So uh, it's five versus five. It's a match point, match point. US versus Europe in uh, New York. Some all Americans here, mostly. So the guy on the bottom right there, I think he's stressed already. Still moving. I'm gonna pull some hair. Yeah. So uh, I also learned a new term when I talk to the Americans, right? Over there they got this thing called helicopter parents. It means uh, the parents like helicopter. Where you go, I follow. I wanna know who you are with, who you're who you're talking to. Then the, the, the kids, right, like, Dad, Mom, I want this. Okay, boom, 50 US, 60 US, like, wow, walking ATM. Buying all the jersey, all the merchandise, off sold out, eh. Happens in Malaysia also, guys. It's already happening. Right, so this is in South Korea. So I went there, right, like, wow, another stadium environment. So esports, people get it wrong. People think gamers playing in the uh, basement with pizza, right? 
they forgot that there's actually a different culture happening out there because you are not that generation, right? You will not understand unless you go to their event. I did not understand. Okay, I confess lah. I'm actually 38 years old, okay? But I don't, I'm not in this era. So I have to go to their era, right? And uh, it's, all about, it's all about entertainment. You know, like football, you see. You know, two teams coming, you shake hands. Preet, game start, that's it, right? This one is a whole entertainment value, a whole production value there. And this is how it looks like for a big esports event. Right? And night. So this is the start. The stage comes together. There's even AI involved, augmented reality. Last uh, two years ago, there's a big dragon. You can search on YouTube, League of Legends. So I was in the stadium. Where's the dragon? Huh? I saw on the screen, you know. Cannot see one? Oh, it's AR. Okay, kampong, kampong. So I learned, right? Then this is smart already. Oh, got four girls dancing on the stage, right? KDA, right? So it's AR, augmented reality. So you can see on the screen, but cannot see on the real life. But then those on the YouTube watching or Twitch watching, you can see it's like augmented reality. So this is how they do the team introduction. Guys, you don't know them, but these are all superstars. People are lined up just to get their autograph or their selfie with them. So that's the commentator, the caster. So for Air Asia, we entered the space uh, within six months. A lot of uh, people, especially the Matsale, they, they share with me that, oh wow, you guys entered within uh, six months. Usually, a normal company, you know how long it takes? Uh? It takes two years. One year for education, one year for budget approvals, you know? So within six months, we entered the space, right? So we sponsored Mineski, a Dora 2 team, very popular in Southeast Asia. Uh, we did it the day before the ESL1 event. All the media was there. All the news, they won ch champions in China. Uh, one, one over a million ringgit. Most of them are millionaires, you know. So uh, don't think that, oh, esports just play for fun. Um, the one, yeah, I came out in NSC as well, New Straits Times. We also acquired a Mobile Legends team, which we're going to rebrand. A big announcement coming up in August this year. Yep. See all the fans. Yeah, this is a match point between Malaysia and Singapore in uh, one of the shopping malls in. I can't remember, let me think. It's a Paradigm Mall, I believe, yeah? Too many events, need to keep track. Yeah, this is a match point. It's like in uh, Rome, you know, in the Coliseum. Ah, it's like watching Coliseum. It's like bola, like that, like football. Like, oh. See all the demographics there? Average age between uh, 18 to 35. Some even younger, as young as 15 or even 40. So they also do like, sorry, they also do like birthday cake. So you know our era, right? Uh, oh, uh, support Manchester United, they do a cake. So they support our team, they do a cake during the girlfriend's birthday. The boyfriend go and do, because the girlfriend support our team. Like, wow, like that also can. Uh. Culture shock. <laughs> yeah. So we also do A-B testing, like want to engage the live streamers, right? So I, I, this is my personal uh, initiative. Just go online and try to uh, understand what is life of being a streamer. You think it's easy just, easy just playing game? Uh? You gotta like tell in advance, hi guys, gonna play tomorrow at this time, this time. Then I'm like working, right? 8 p.m. outside, oh, jam lah, how to go back at 9, 9 p.m. You already promised people. It's like people wanna watch news, you know. Okay, where's your news, 9 p.m. I'm rushing home. Oh, if I'm gonna be late, I need to post, guys, sorry, late five minutes. People, it's like, it's like the TV, you know. So we connected with streamers. Okay, why brands are getting involved in esports? Number one, uh, no one from physical newspaper here, right? <laughs> like, cause no one else is buying physical newspapers, the next generation, right? Anyone still read physical newspapers here? Online lah, online. Most huh? Number two, they're using pop-up ad blockers, right? Um, number three, they are no longer watching your RTM no one from RTM here, right? <laughs> RTM one or, or linear TV lah, di diplomatic a bit. And uh, yeah, so you cannot like cancel, erase the logo of my face ah. It's stuck there on the, this is a screenshot on Facebook Live. 
We also sponsored Alibaba's event. Yeah. 5.5 million US prize money. This in Q City Mall. We connect with the gamers over there. We're also going to open up an esports center in Klang. It's uh, kind of dead mall right now, uh, Harbor Place. We're going to convert and revive the whole shopping mall. Eight stories high. We're going to have an arena, four 500 seater with a big LED giant screen. And also um, build up talents in different sectors. So YB Side Saturday was there. Okay, this is the last slide. My time is out, but just in time. Uh, so esports in the future, right? There's a lot of uh, architects and even a lot of property real estate developers out there want to get involved. Why? Because uh? esports fall under their future-proof segment. When I build my building within the next three to five years, I want to make sure that people are going to use it. Like example, Bangsa South, you've got a place to work, you've got a place to stay, you've got a place to, for entertainment. So they want to make sure whatever they're building is inclusive. So they want to make sure that there's a hybrid space to include esports because you need the Wi-Fi, the networking and stuff like that. It's a lot of technical stuff. So we're also talking to people like Populous who are doing developments like this across the world. So this is what the future looks like. I hope we get to see this within our lifetime. So this type of place is already existing in Manila, Philippines, Quezon City, by Globe Telecoms, a telco company. They already do something like this. Future has arrived, your brand ready. Just a quick one, you know that two weeks ago, right, a 16 year old won 3 million US out of a total prize money of 30 million US dollars. That's 100 over million ringgit. What are we doing here? They're like, they're, they're, a guy won it, right, 16 year old. He's gonna buy the mom a house and stuff like that. It's life changing. Uh, next, uh, two weeks time, August 25th, another 30 over million US prize money for Dota, right? And it's, they don't need sponsors because the developer, the owner of the game, makes so much money. Like Epic Games, Fortnite, they make like three billion US net profit last year revenue, right? 
So like crazy, right? So it's up to you as a brand or as an SME company, how you want to target this next generation via eSports, right? I'm just here to share with you a big macro perspective. You need to go your on-ground research, talk to gamers. If you're not a gamer, never mind, go talk to your son or daughter or your niece or nephew. Ah, they are your consultant, right? I got a lot of messages on LinkedIn. Hey, Alan, my boss asked me to look into eSports, free for coffee. I share with them everything. And then I go back to the agency, right? Hey, eSports. Then the agency is like, what is eSports? Ah? Blur, right? So it's a big opportunity, guys. And uh, if you don't learn from anything, I hope you learn GLH Chef. Anyone know what's GLH Chef? Okay, you learned it today, okay? It's called Good Luck, Have Fun. So before the game, they always type it Good Luck, Have Fun. Right? Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening. All right, thank you, Alan. Now we're going to take one or two questions oh, okay. we have on Slido here. So the first one is Can you promote Paladins more in Malaysia? Okay, okay, I'll go post today on, uh, on Facebook and such. Uh, I don't play that game, but uh, different games like Malaysia, everyone knows Mobile Legends and uh, PUBG Mobile is the top games for mobile. And uh, PC is like Dota. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll do my best, whoever mentioned it. Okay. Paladins. So the second one is Is there a team manager like Jose Marino for esports? Team manager. Okay, guys, don't get me wrong. Esports is very exciting, but. Jose Mourinho, yeah, I got. But it's very rare because esports is not like your traditional sports, Manchester United, Chelsea, all. Uh, esports is not taking care of five uh, esports athletes. Uh, since it's an open topic, I'm just going to be very transparent. It's like taking care of five kids. Uh. I'm going three right now, so I know. Five kids in a the house, they fight, they scream. They play together, they have fun, everything. It's like, imagine you've got one kid in the house. You've got to take care of your son, your daughter. You've got to take care of five of them. That's eSports team for you. <laughs> huh? Don't think you're a professional, David Beckham, all. You need to do personal branding, tell them, tell them how to speak in front of the camera, in front of media, etc. How to play, uh, how to uh, have sportsmanship. Yeah. Well, Alan, thank you for letting us know how real it gets. Thank you so much once again. Now, if you have any more questions for him, feel free to look for him backstage or whenever you can catch him outside, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a very, very big thank you and a round of applause for Alan Pang. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Lorraine.